are the salt for the earth, O people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. You are the light on a hill, O people, light for the city of God. Shine so holy and bright, O people, shine for the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. You are a seed of the word, O people. Bring forth the kingdom of God. Seeds of mercy and seeds of justice. Give in the kingdom of God. Grow, bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. We are a blessed and a pilgrim people bound for the kingdom of God. Love our journey and love our homeland. Love is the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. Okay, anybody else? I want to remind you, if you are looking for any books or videos, look down in the kitchen. They're going fast. <laughs> and we will have to be getting those out of there pretty soon when we start uh, working on Thanksgiving. But uh, anyway, if you're thinking about it, there are some good books still down there. No one else? Would you join me in our call to worship? We are called to be the people of God's kingdom. We are called to be people who love as God has loved us. We are called to be those who would serve. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all here on this cloudy fall morning. At this time, I'd like to hear the joys and concerns, if there are any. Yes. Okay, Bob Gratzer is at home recovering. That's wonderful, good. I guess he's doing well after the stents or whatever. Yep, are there any others? If not, then let us pray. 
Loving God, you have created such a wonderful world for us. You have created us and called us your own. How we long to know you better. We search for you. We search for meaning and purpose in our lives. In doing so, we are not so different <clears throat> from the chief priests and the elders who were anxious about authority. We are not so different from the Pharisees whose worry about Caesar transcended their worship of you. We are not so different from the Sadducees whose concern about the future life dwarfed their interest in the here and now. And so we question and wonder what is right, what is correct, <clears throat> what is just. <clears throat> oh God, grant to us the understanding of the scribe who questioned Jesus, not because of suspicion, but in faith. Let us ask with him which commandment is the first of all. And when you answer that we are to love God and our neighbor and ourselves, help us to embrace your answer and courageously live the kind of life to which we have been called. May your commandment of love be written on our hearts and may we go forth to write its message on the heart of the world. Guide us, loving spirit, calm our fears. <clears throat> Be with those of us who are hurting in any way, a way known only to you. And we lift up those whom we love silently in our hearts. Be with all those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Comfort those who have lost a loved one. Strengthen those who seek discernment in making a difficult decision. Help us to love our neighbors by seeking justice and compassion in this fragmented world. We, like the scribes, seek the kingdom of God. By your grace, help us to catch a glimpse of that kingdom in our lives this day. All this we ask in your name as we pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will have our second hymn. It is Take My Life and Let It Be. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at thy impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee 
take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour, at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, starting with the first verse. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, and went, which is opposite of Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtanau, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negleb and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab. At the Lord's command, he was buried in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israel, Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was, was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of spirit and of wisdom, because Moses has laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all of his servants in his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, starting with the 34th verse. Would you stand, please, for the reading? <clears throat> when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them said, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment is the law in the law is the greatest. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No, no one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated.
This morning I want to share something with you uh, that I found in devotional booklet. Um, we have the upper room that comes every two or three months, but this is another upper room book called Discipline. Some of you may have seen it. It's actually a book, and it has um, devotionals for every day of the year. And I really liked this one that I read yesterday that was all about Scripture and how we feel about it um, and how we approach it. And so it really spoke to me, and I hope it will speak to you too. She says, I love when Jesus is smart and edgy, when he trips up the Pharisees, puzzles them, mystifies them. They know the scriptures, but he knows God. They live by the letter, he lives by the spirit. Some Christians have used the Bible as a weapon, sometimes using it to defeat and exclude and sometimes to destroy some have driven honest seekers away from the faith by making it sacred stories into traps or tests. After being subjected to some of these tests and caught in a few of those traps, I have come to see the great legacy we have in the Bible as an invitation. Dwell in these stories. Explore them, wrestle with them, imagine your way into them, talk about them with one another, seek the wisdom of scholars, there's so many in print and online, and let the word speak to you across the ages in your own language, in your own heart. Listen for the word or phrase that speaks to you. Let the Spirit breathe in the sentences and the spaces between them. Carry these stories in your heart. Remember the tax collectors and sinners, the wise virgins and the sheep, the ravens and the angels. Treasure them and let them teach you. Never use them to browbeat others. Don't reduce poetry to pious pronouncements or parables to rules. Let them mystify, invite, unnerve, and delight you. It's all yours to enter, but not to own or control. All may enter and dwell and learn by going. When I read the Bible in that spirit, the passages can enliven me. I find what I need, and sometimes what I didn't know I needed. And I just love that. And so I always try to look at scripture in a different way, from a different angle. Uh, not that the standard sermons and um, the regular Insights that we preach are, are not good enough on their own. They are, but sometimes we want to see more from the Bible. We want to look at it from the bottom, from the side, from the top, from the way different people would see it, from the way the characters in the stories would see them, the different characters. Who do we identify? Whatever you believe about the Bible, true, false, the absolute word of God or a good book to read with many good things to teach us, it is a very influential book. It certainly was quite influential in the world and especially in our Western civilization. And not only that, people today all across the world still base their ideas and their values and opinions based on things they have read in the Bible. Now, when we look at both of these stories today, we see one from the Old Testament and one from the New. And some of the things uh, these stories have in common. 
One thing is that both stories have endings. In the first one, Moses has died, and the people are in mourning, as they should be for somebody who's led them for 40 years. And as the text says, there never arose a greater prophet after that. And in the second story, we see them trying to trap Jesus again, the religious leaders coming to him with another question. But of course, Jesus is able to give them an answer that leaves them speechless once again. And so the author says that people stopped asking Jesus any more loaded questions. So both stories have endings, the endings of Moses' life and the ending of people coming after Jesus, trying to trap him with stories and questions. In both of these stories, wisdom is given and received. Before he dies, God tells Moses that Moses will not get to the promised land with the people that he's been leading for the last 40 years. But Moses gets to see the promised land because God allows Moses a vision, an actual sighting of the promised land. So though he may not get there, he is able to see it. Joshua gets wisdom from Moses when Moses places his hands on Joshua, blessing him and consecrating him, Joshua, to take over from Moses. And in the second story, wisdom is given and received too. Jesus declares what the greatest commandments are. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, your whole being, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So we see the things that these two stories, two readings have in common. And they have more in common than that and in common with us and in our life today. In the first story, the ancient Israelites are still being led into the promised land where they can live the life that God has created for them, that God wants for them and the symbol being the promised land. The early Christians in the second story, they're being given wisdom too by what Jesus says, and they are being led by his words to the cross and through the resurrection to the life that God had created for them to live. In our world, we are trying to move forward to live the life that God created for us. For all of us, it's that abundant life that Jesus spoke about. The life that is more than just surviving in this world. So the ancient Israelites are being led to the promised land. The early Christians, through Jesus' words, are being led to the promised land. And we, in our world, are being led to the promised land also. Our whole world and our country is in transition. Hopefully, our election will be moving us in the direction of the life that God created us for. Remember what Martin Luther King Jr. said on the night before he died, and I think those words apply to us this day. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. Like anybody else, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up that mountain. And I've looked over and I have seen 
the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to that promised land. And I believe that God wants us all to get to the promised land. What is the promised land? It's the kingdom of God that we sang about this morning. The kingdom that Jesus talks about. The place where we are at one with God and we are at peace in our souls and we are trying to be at one with each other and we are at peace with one another. Remember, Jesus says, don't go running here and there looking for the kingdom of God. It's right there within you. And the promised land is the symbol of the kingdom of God. God wants us to make it through the wildernesses that we have been living through. We've been traveling through so many different kinds of wildernesses. Certainly in the past four years, with so many people being at odds with one another, all the changes we've had, and certainly through the great pandemic. God wants us to make it through these wildernesses together. The wilderness of illness, of lost jobs, of lost lives, lost dreams, broken relationships, of having our world turned upside down from the pandemic, from the painful divisiveness that keeps us from being able to love our neighbors as ourselves. People feel that they have to take sides and you must be on one side or the other, and that we can't quite be together the way we should be. But God wants all of us to make it through these wildernesses and to get to that promised land and to help bring about the kingdom of God. And how do we get to that promised land? By following the greatest commandments. Love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, your whole being. And love others as you love yourself. Can't believe in God? Well, can you believe in love? Because God is love. And love conquers all. Amen. And now, at this time, we would normally be collecting your tithes, gifts, and offerings for the Lord. But of course, with the pandemic, we don't want to do that. So we do have two plates in the back, one for the church and one for Agape House. And if you are joining us online, if you look to the bottom of your screen, you will be able to see a way in which you also may donate. Um, or you may mail your donation into the church. And we have, we are collecting for something else. Can, uh, we are also collecting for people with um, photographs left. They are trying to collect photographs that they have taken of people who have died and who are here. We are collecting comfort items for senior citizens. Give us a couple examples. Blankets, candles, activity books. Okay, so we are collecting those items as well. Uh, and now, Darren, if you play the doxology. Him, all creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. 
Amen. Now, if you'd please join in our prayer of dedication. Lord of all, Lord of all that we see and all that we cannot see, give us this day a glimpse of the complexities of the world and the simplicity of living our lives centered in you, loving you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and loving our neighbors well. Bless the gifts we offer you, but in our giving, Help us focus on these other, more basic gifts. May the love we show you and others be a testimony of whom we follow and who is worthy of our devotion. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. And now we'll have our closing hymn, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came to me and the dance went on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath when I came the lame, and holy people said it was a shame. They whipped, they stopped, and they hung me high, and they told me they're on a cross to die. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all on the dance, said he. I danced on the Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I'll still go on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and i'll lead you all in the dance said he they cut me down and i clipped on high i am the life that i'll never never die i'll love you do you i'll love you wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance said he receive the blessing go now in love and peace remembering those two greatest commandments of Jesus Love the Lord your God, Jesus, with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your whole being, and love others as you love yourself.
please take that message out into all the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.